Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. Free agency is underway, officially starting Wednesday at 3 o'clock Central. We've been hearing rumblings about different signings, playing players going different places. It has been pretty wild, pretty fun. The Saints, they went for two fullbacks. Adam Prentice, who's been here with the Saints, signed a one-year deal. Then they went out and got a free agent, Xander Horvath. Horvath was a seventh round pick by the Los Angeles Chargers in 2022. He spent some time last season with the Chargers and Pittsburgh Steelers on their practice squads. He went to Purdue where he played running back. Prentice, he was picked up by the Saints on waivers during the preseason 2021. Last season, he played 13 games for the Saints, had one start. He's been a lead blocker for us big time specialist. He had a career best five coverage stops last season. John DeShazer and myself were able to catch up with both fullbacks today. So we have a fun podcast today, getting to know both of them a little bit better. We're going to kick things off with Adam Prentice, and then we'll go into our conversation with Xander Horvath. Adam, thank you for taking some time to join us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. Congratulations on signing. How are you feeling now that that process is done? Oh, I feel great. You know, it's this is my first off season of free agency, so it's a little nerve wracking. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be back in New Orleans, back with the city, and you know, back in this organization with this team. You know, we we built, we we caught some strides late in the season last year, and I think that's definitely going to be momentum that we can build on. You know, starting in the off season, and I'm excited to get back and get working with the guys again and here in a few weeks. You said that you were excited to be back in New Orleans and in this city with these players. What is it that you really liked about being in this city? Man, it's just a special place. I think this is the most unique environment you can have for football in the National Football League. I think this city, it's 365 days of New Orleans Saints football. You know, regardless of the day, it's always involved in some fashion. And they take a lot of pride um, in the product we put on the field. And, and so do we as players, you know, we know we represent the city as well as representing ourselves, but I know, we know that it's the city first and that's what we take pride in. And that's why we try to, you know, put our, our best product on the field every, every, uh, every Sunday or whatever day it is um, and try to get as win many wins in the dome and where we end up playing. I know last year you dealt with some injuries. How are you doing now health wise, getting ready to really attack your off season? I feel great. No issues. Um, finished on a healthy note. Um, I'm excited to get back. You know, I think, you know, last year was, was uh, we had a lot of ups and downs, but I think, you know, we, we have a lot to say for the last few weeks of the season. I think we're all really excited. And, you know, I think we, we caught glimpses of what we're capable of. And I think we all know that we're capable of a lot more. And we're all expecting to to show that this year. Obviously, with the changes on the offensive side, the staff there, Clint Kubiak coming in as the offensive coordinator, we know how much he loves his fullbacks. How much does that add to your excitement for the upcoming season? Now this that that offense is a fullback's dream. Um, you know, I've I've watched you know a few guys play in that system. You know, as I've been in the league, and you know, coming into before I came into the league, and you know, that's just that that's a fullback's dream. You know, they use them so much and you know it's something i'm very excited to to get back and start learning and just you know just absorb as much as i can and watch the tape on these guys that you know i've seen play i've talked to cj a couple weeks ago and you know he's been he was just expressed his excitement for me and being able to be in the system again hopefully and you know i'm just uh, so i'm sure i'll be picking his brain and, and just trying to learn as much as i can for as many different people um but I'm, I'm really excited you know i think this this offense is is catching fire, you know, here in the last few years and a lot of teams are adopting it. And that's because it's it's been really productive. And I think that's a testament to the fullback position. And, you know, that's something that us fullbacks in the league are trying to keep alive and, and we'll eventually get it to where it, hopefully there's 32 starting fullbacks someday in the league. Adam, which skills are you having to dust off, I guess, to 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 get in this offense and 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 be a good portion of it? Yeah, so I mean I think you know, my last few years, I've been primarily a blocking fullback. You know, that's something I will continue to focus on, you know, because that's obviously a big part. But I think, 
they're with all the motions, a lot of pass plays, you know, running the ball, carrying the ball, you know, something I'm honing on a little more um, in, in the event that I'll be asked to do those things. Um, you know, something that's something I'm not, I haven't done a lot of in the past. And that's something I want to make sure that I continue to sharpen and continue to focus on, you know, as I train and we get into OTAs and, you know, continue this off season program, you know, cause that's something I want to become an asset, you know, when I'm on the field and something that I can count on teams, you know, having to prepare for all of, all of it when I step on the field and not just, you know, expecting me to be in there to block. Uh, do you figure you might have to, I guess, reconfigure a bit? physically or you know maybe lose a little a little weight or or is there anything you might have to change physically to fit uh I'm not really sure you know that's something you know I'm sure we'll explore when I get when I get in the building here in a few weeks um but I I'm not at the moment trying to make any drastic changes you know I let get in front of the strength coaches and the coaching staff and see what their vision is and then you know if that's something they would like me to do then you know I'll get a meal plan going with the dietitian and you know work with strength staff and and exhaust all my resources to to make sure I get to the the ability, the shape, and all that that they need me to be. Hey, we know this is a good offense for fullbacks, but how important has it been to be in this organization that already valued fullbacks, and therefore you had a roster? I mean, not a lot of teams in the NFL have fullbacks, but the Saints are, are one of the teams that you know, I guess, since two thousand six, pretty much have always had a fullback on the roster. Yeah, and I think that's you know that's a testament to their belief in this position. Um, and, you know, the, to show that they want to keep this position alive, I think that, excuse me, that shows, you know, why they brought in Coach Kubiak and, and this system, that, you know, it's a position they value and a position they want to keep. And I think that shows, you know, why there's a couple of us on the roster. Like, this is this is going to be a point of emphasis um, for the system, and so they want, you know, want to to incorporate that. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be, be in this system, and, you know, they're – and you're trying to be part of an organization that, that truly values the fullback. How much, I guess, are you looking forward to it? I mean, I, I understand the the old offense was productive. Um, you guys won a lot of games that way. And yet now is the time for fresh breath and, and new blood and to kind of get things restarted. Yeah, and no, I'm 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 excited. I think every now and then you need a change and just kind of a mix up, you know, what you do. And, you know, I'm I think this this staff that's that's been assembled is you know, going to be our going to be what we need to accomplish the goals we want to. That's winning the Super Bowl. Um, there hasn't been one that's been brought to the city in a long time, and you know, I would love to be a part of that team next year that does it. And uh, you know, I think this this staff and this this team we have, you know, is very very capable of accomplishing those things. And it's a matter of us coming in this off season and you know, and and taking advantage of the time we do have in the classroom, learning the system and. And the time we have together to you know to continue to build that chemistry, you know, with the guys that we have that we've had had and the new guys coming in. Okay, so you mentioned the classroom. I gotta ask, are you the smartest guy on the team? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I you know have a master's but, in structural engineering. Yeah, I I do. Um, I think I know I know James Hurst is done, but I believe he did have the highest Wonderlic score on the team. <laughs> Past few years that he was on the team, uh, but I don't know. I I mean, I think I'm I'm pretty smart, uh, but I don't know if I'm the smartest on the team. Adam, you know the you know the wonder look doesn't count, right? Really? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't quite translate. But so you want to be you want to own your own design firm when you're done with football? Yeah, that would be the ultimate goal, um, and part, that was part of my motivation of getting the structural engineering masters. It's that I can actually do the designing things myself. Um, because if you if you stick with just the civil engineering undergrad degree, which I have, a lot of times you do a lot of project management um, stuff, which eventually I would like to do. But I think it's the cool part is designing the bridges, design you know the buildings for whatever it could be subjected to. Um, so yeah, that's that would be the end goal. And you know I've done some internships here and there um, throughout college to so get some of that experience, but. That's something I'll hopefully pick up here and who knows when my season, my career will be done. So you're looking at like big structures, like you said, bridges and big buildings. So we're not yeah, talking so, houses. No. So I like my, so I do the structural engineering masters and I also got it in conjunction with the railroad engineering um, certification. So we did a lot of classes on, you know, railroad bridge design, um, track design, 
Um, so like that stuff, I, I think the build the bigger the structure, the the more complicated, more fun it will be, especially to see it, you know, finished and, and in use. Yeah. Well, does that kind of translate into football? Like the bigger the challenge, like this year, learning a new system, obviously having the new OC, is that kind of motivating and you get excited about that just because it's a new challenge? Absolutely. I think, you know, it, it's just, it's an endless, endless um, cycle of learning. You know, every, every year I try to, you know, I've said, in the, you know, the same system the last three years before this. So every year I came in, I was like, okay, I want to, okay, I got, I got, feel like I got this part down. Now I want to focus on learning this part even more. Like, why do we call it this? Why, why are we doing it this way? What, just trying to learn different facets. So this year it's going to be, you know, obviously everything's new to me. So just trying to absorb and put as much time in as I can, you know, learn as much as I can and, and uh yeah and no, i think it's fun like i love learning and like, especially when it comes to football um there's a lot of different ways to do things in football and i think the more the more you, ways you learn the better you know you can be so we we often see the specialists walking around together but you're i mean they're kind of a small group but you might be the smallest group obviously you're the only one so now yeah. you're going to have somebody else that you can kind of hang out with all the time with uh, Xander Horvath joining the team as well I know it might be a competition there, but how beneficial is it to you to have somebody that's in your same position that's going to be around and on the team? I love it. I mean, it's just somebody else that that knows the daily grind of being a fullback, and you know, we probably have similar training, uh, similar training regimens, and it's just you know, picking the brain, picking each other's brain on you know, how do you train for this? How do you prepare for this? You know, I mean, obviously the fullback position is a lot of blocking, and that's not something we're able to do until camp starts. So, you know, how do you train, you know, con uh, how do you prepare for contact in the, on the off season when you can't hit anybody or how do you, you know, just have you done individual drills, you know, at other teams with other coaches. Um, so it's just, it's just always good to have somebody there that is in the same boat as you that is experiencing the same thing. Um, I love it. I think, you know, like I said, there, it's a small group of us. Um, so anytime we get, I get around other fullbacks, I really love it. I have to give you another congratulations because it looks like you just got engaged at the beginning of the I month. I so yes, congratulations. You want to tell us a little bit about what in, went into that? Cause you have a pretty nice video on your Instagram. So you had it planned out very well. I did. Uh, so my now fiance, we've been dating for a few years now, I met in college, um, kind of reconnected re uh, after I started playing and was kind of, you know, back in the area when I was in Denver, you know, I started my career. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, you know, she'd been wanting to go to this church, you know, by a, about a month or so now, a month and a half ago now. And I was a couple hours away up in the mountains and I kind of played it off. Like, nah, I don't really want to go that far. Like, you know, and then after I was like, all right, like this actually might be a good place to do it. You know, she, she it won't, it won't tip her off too much because she's wanted to go there. And yeah, I, uh, I got a buddy that he was our video and, and media guy when I played at Colorado State. He does one of the, the local hockey teams now. So I hit him up and we went to a game and you know, asked if he'd be willing to do it. And he said he would. So we, we coordinated him being up there with a video and a drone and, and getting pictures. And then I, you know, I got her best friend up to get her nails done and, and try to try to not tip her off too much, yeah. um, which is very hard. She's a very intuitive woman. And she, uh, she questioned me a few times whether it was going to happen. I had to, I had to play it off, you know, pretty good, but it ended up working. She was surprised and, and, uh, it turned out to be very, very nice. Yeah. That's awesome. When I saw the drone, I was like, how did she not notice that? I mean, that's kind of crazy, but good for yeah. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, one last thing before we let you go, I was looking back way back when you were in high school, you won multiple state titles and a national championship as a wrestler. Yeah. So we, uh, my junior, senior year, we won as a team, we won the fourth and fifth in a row state championship title uh, as a team. And then I placed uh, second my senior year. And then we, my, I think it was my junior year, if I'm not mistaken, that we won a national title as a team. And I think that was our, I want to say that was the second one. I think my sophomore year, the team won it, but I wasn't on the, I wasn't on the, uh, the starting line, but we, I think we won twice in a row. And so, yeah, we were, we were a powerhouse for a while. Yeah. I mean, I guess that helps in football, especially in your position. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I encourage anybody that wants to play football to wrestle. I mean, just 
you're constantly in you know, what they call football position in a, in a stand, a low stance, you know, you're having yeah. to be comfortable, you know, move quickly. And, and a lot of it's feel. And I think football is a lot of feel too, especially with blocking. Um, and just being able to to move in a low position um, and be powerful and explosive um, is a benefit to anybody playing the game. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Again, congratulations. Appreciate you. you taking the time and we'll see you here at the facility soon. Sounds great. I'm excited to be back. Xander, thank you so much for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. Your first official Saints, I don't know, duties that you get to check off. Um, meeting all the, the media and getting a chance to let the fans know a little bit about who you are. But how excited are you to finally sign it and be with a new team here with the Saints? I am very excited. It's been a long time coming. And, you know, when you're at home for a while, you're thinking if you're going to have not, another opportunity or not, or if it's the last, just wait for your call. So can't express how thankful I am for the opportunity and excited to get out there for OTAs here soon. And just briefly, we were talking before we got on here and you said you had an opportunity to play here preseason with the Chargers. So you've been in the Superdome. How much are you looking forward to actually playing in a regular season there and being on the with the good guys on our side? I think it'll be a great experience. You know, I'm, I'm used to the, the Chargers home facility, so it'll be a different change up. But, you know, a new change of scenery is always good. So I can't complain about that. And I'm just ready to get back on the field and, you know, do what I've always loved to do been in the league for a few years practice squad a lot last year but the first year that you were in the league you really did very well as a fullback with the chargers knowing that you're coming into a system here with new oc and clint kubiak how much are you looking forward to an opportunity to really get some run in, in an offense again i think that'll be a great opportunity and coming in getting drafted as a fullback and playing uh playing on special teams as well was great and Going from that to a year of sitting out practice squads and barely being on teams was a huge change. So having another opportunity to, you know, show showcase what I can do and actually get utilized in different uh, ways with Coach Kubiak's system, I think would be great. And, you know, just looking at teams that use that in the past, like San Fran, you know, there's always a winning team doing great. So I think it'll just help the team um, in the positive in the long run. Xander, if nothing else, we know you can catch the ball because you can't have a couple of touchdown catches in your first couple of games. The first NFL player to do that as a running back or fullback since 1942, which is kind of insane considering the, the <laughs> running backs that have come to the NFL. But how much are you looking forward to utilizing that aspect of your skills with this offense, considering, you know, what the what the 49ers do with their fullbacks? Mm -hmm. I think I always say it's a great, uh, you know, trait of mine. And in college, I played running back my whole career in high school and everything. So I'm used to catching the ball. Uh, you know, running and coming out of the backfield and doing like that too. So having the ability to incorporate that into my skill set when I'm on the field can, I think, help the team. And, you know, the defense, when they're out there, they usually expect just running the ball like somewhere up the middle when the fullback's in. So with an offense that's going to have someone who can be utilized in different ways like that, I think is going to benefit the team. So I'm just excited to, you know, have a different role, something similar to that where I can do more than just block. You know, how critical is it to just find a team that values fullbacks? Because most NFL teams have kind of, you know, segued away from that position, but you found a, a, an organization that values fullbacks. I think that may be one of the main issues for guys trying to get on teams. A lot of it is, I mean, it definitely has to do with the skill set, but being able to find a team that actually is going to utilize you in a variety of different ways to keep you there long term, whether it's just getting on special teams or doing whatever they need to do for a few plays. If, if you're, you know, positive on the field and they're able to utilize you, they can keep you there long term. So I'm excited for this opportunity, too, because it's a great team to use a fullback. And, and the way they use them is different than other teams. So I'm excited about it. Now, now you play fullback now. You play running back in college. But I saw where was Indiana wanted you as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. preferred yes. also. How how does that go? I mean, we're, we're, one were you going to be willing to do it <laughs> because, you know, obviously being a running back, I guess you have to switch positions. And, you know, if you want to get on the team, get on the field, I guess you do what you got to do. And yet it was a, a significant change and you were able to get to Purdue at running back, but still before that, you know, you, you were a preferred walk on as, as a, as a linebacker. What, what was that like? Yeah, that was a, that was a tough time to say the least coming out of high school. I didn't really have much going for me. Like I wish I did. Um, I had a, I was offered to West Point, but 
coming out of high school, that would be like a 10 year commitment with the five years of serving and everything after. So kind of straight away from that one. And my only other option was to walk on at IU for linebacker. And I had only really played linebacker my senior year because we were short guys and they did get everyone to go both ways. So just being somewhat unfamiliar with the position, you know, kind of scared me out of that. And luckily Chris Barclay over at Purdue was running back coach. He reached out to me after the fact that I was planning on going to IU and hit me up about wanting to play running back. So, you know, my whole life I played running back and the dream was to play D1 college ball. So I took the opportunity going as preferred walk on there. Um, did well my first year, did great during camp, and then they offered me a scholarship after that following camp. So I think it worked out in my favor and, you know, played my – I was there for five years. Tried to do the best I could do and, you know, eventually got drafted. So I would say things worked out for the better. Now we know um, fullbackers don't get a whole lot of credit for their agility. And yet in this offense, or at least from what we've seen from, from youth check – with San Francisco, there's some agility involved. You played running back, obviously, too. So what's, where are you on the agility 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 scale, if I can say the word? I don't know if I really have a number for myself, but I would say, <laughs> I, I'd say I'm pretty agile just from playing so much running back and, you know, off-season training and everything. I, I still do running back drills. I try to keep up with footwork and do everything. So when that does come, I can utilize it. But, I mean, I put on 10 pounds when I was at Chargers to play a fullback, so – I've always been, you know, 230 playing as a running back and 10 pounds isn't too crazy. So I would say the speed and agility is still there. So, yeah, I, I put on 10 not to play fullback just because, you know, age and whatnot. Um, what, we live here in New Orleans and the food is yeah, good, exactly. so watch I'm, out. Food. <laughs> exactly. Um, so when, you, when you're studying this offense, what are the things that jump out to you as in terms of playing fullback? Well, when I was with L.A. for game prep, I always just watched. I'd pick three fullbacks out and, you know, watch a few games of each of them. And San Fran with Kyle Juszczyk was always the number one film that I watched. And, you know, being a fullback and, like you said, they don't get praised that much. So having the ability to get out on passes, maybe get some runs, block, and do all different types of things, I think will benefit, you know, my game as a whole. Um but, you know, I watched him. I watched the fullback at the Falcons, and then I watched the fullback at the Raiders. So just kind of seeing what all these different offenses do and how our offensive system would benefit the fullback so much more, I think is going to be a great opportunity. Coming in here, you're going to be able to join a fullback. It's rare to have one on a roster, and now you're going to have two. Might be a little competition there, but what are you looking forward to about being here with Adam Prentice, somebody who has already been with the team and been valued for his position? Yeah, you know, playing sports my whole life, competition is the number one thing. So I've always been a fan of it, and you can't really stray away from that in sports. So I think it's a good opportunity. You know, coming into the league, I was drafted, but they still had another fullback that I was competing against. And luckily, I beat him out and, you know, made the team. So hopefully we can have another opportunity like that here. But I think it's going to push both of us to our, you know, full potential. Because at the end of the day, like, jobs are on the line, so you got to give it everything you got. And, if it was just one fullback, too, you could, you know, catch yourself slacking. So I don't want to ever be in that position. So I think competition is just the main part of it, and there's no way of getting around it. So I heard you earlier saying that you didn't know anybody on the team here with the Saints, but who are you looking forward to maybe being in the locker room with? I don't have a specific guy, but I think it'll be good to be with, you know, another group of professional players, too, because I've been with the same guys for pretty much – a year or two. So, you know, getting around different, you know, quarterbacks and stuff and see what their, you know, coaching style is of, you know, bringing the team on and bringing guys up is going to be cool. And I'm interested in learning about that. So I'm sure I'll find guys that will hang around and stuff too. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. You look like you, you know, take care of yourself as far as your off season routines go, because you put up your videos all on Instagram mm -hmm. of you working out. So what is in store for this off season? Well, uh, I normally go down to Florida and train, but, you know, being not on a team and saving the money here and there, my wife's also pregnant. So staying at home to help her out has been one of the main things. But luckily, I have friends who live right down the road from me that have an indoor facility that they let me use and a gym right down the road. So I'm going to be doing that for a little bit more. But, I mean, I've been maintaining, you know, catching passes, doing agility work, fullback and running back, blocking, and then just staying in shape with conditioning. So, I've been training for a few years at different places, so I've been utilizing, you know, their tactics and stuff that they did throughout the day.
Sure. Where's home for you? I'm in Granger, Indiana. Okay. Are you guys going to stay there? Because I'm pretty sure you're you're expecting in the summer, right? Yep. We just bought a house here this past year. So, you know, cost of living is cheap and all of our families here too. So we'll probably have a home base here and then just bounce around. Yeah. I would say that being pregnant in the New Orleans, Louisiana heat probably isn't the fun, most fun thing. So probably wise to stay there. Yeah, in Indiana. I heard about all the heat advisories and the humidity. So I'm sure that wouldn't be too fun for her. <laughs> and this is your first child? Yes. And so how much are you looking forward to that? How is it going to change things for you? Uh, I'm excited about it. You know, there's no like scariness to it yet. I'm sure that'll come later on, but being the first in my family and, you know, it's going to be a definitely a change of, you know, how you go about your lifestyle. I got two huge dogs too that almost act like kids. So I'm sure that's a little uh, beginner to it, but I'm excited. We're having a girl too. So girl dad for the first one will be interesting. There you go. We got a couple of those around here. So I'm sure you can <laughs> lean on some of the guys. Um, the other aspect of you, the non-football related, your artist, um, you like to draw. Mm -hmm. I saw a bunch of your pictures. They're phenomenal. How did you, you get into that and, and how, what are you hoping to do with it? I've kind of been doing that my whole life. My mom is a great artist. Um, I guess on both sides of her family, there's artists throughout them. Um, but my mom's side of the family, they had 12 kids and a lot of them can draw too. So I've always been doing that just as a side hobby. And I know I took art classes in high school just because they were super easy for me. <laughs> but I didn't really get into doing a bunch of different work until COVID, just with the amount of time and I was just getting bored. So I started doing some of the cars and posted them on Facebook. And eventually people started asking about commission work. So I never really thought about that to begin with and started doing a couple of those. And then it started popping off. And now I, you know, prices have gone up. My work has gotten a lot better too, because I try to maintain that year round. It's just a good side hobby because I was going to do it either way, but you might as well make a little bit of money off of it too. Yeah. Well, if anybody listening is interested, you can go to at art underscore by underscore Xander on Instagram, right? To check out some of yes. your work. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Very cool. We look forward to having you here at the facility soon, getting to meet you in person. And I know there's going to be a lot of fun stuff in store for you this summer with OTAs. So we'll see you here soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to come down. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate both Xander and Adam joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. That is not all that the Saints have done in free agency as they signed linebacker Willie Gay earlier this week. We will have him on the pod this upcoming week. He's going to be here in the facility, so it's going to be fun to catch up with him in person, and we'll keep you posted. If anything else happens, as always, you can follow along NewOrleansSaints.com or at Saints on X. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.